105.5 WDUV, The Dove. Good morning and welcome to Sunday Morning. I am Jeff Slater. Glad to be with you this morning with a two-part program coming up in the second half of this morning's show. We'll learn about how you could get or maybe qualify for low-income insurance for your kids through the Children's Health Insurance Program. Here in Florida, it's called Florida Kid Care. Before we talk about your child's health care and maybe getting coverage for it, let's talk about this hot real estate market that we're in right now. If you've been following the news in the last year when it comes to the real estate market, you know things are just absolutely turned upside down. It is crazy. Now, this time last year, we were in the thick of a pandemic and we're not out of the woods yet. And I was sitting back saying, you know what? A lot of people probably going to lose their homes due to unemployment. They're not going to be able to pay the mortgage. I bet you the real estate market just really takes a dump in 2021 and they'll be selling homes dirt cheap. Boy, was old radio breath wrong on that one. I got to tell you right now, it's amazing to see homes right now being sold for tens of thousands of dollars over asking. We're seeing people lining up to beg homes. We're, we're seeing people moving across country just to buy a house. Why is that? Is it the mortgage rates that are so low? It's not inventory because we know the inventory isn't out there. In fact, home builders right now, due to the supply chain, can't even get materials to build new homes. So what the heck is going on with the real estate market? Well, we reached out and found one of the top experts in the country, not only a real estate and mortgage consultant and professional, also a well-known author. He has two books out previously called The Flip and Essayist. And now his new book is The Broker Deal, Steals and Moving Forward. And that book is available right now, Amazon and wherever you buy your reading material. The author is D. Sidney Potter, author and real estate mortgage expert. Uh, Mr. Potter, I got to tell you, I was wrong on this, man. I saw us going into this pandemic and I thought, boy, they're going to be giving away homes in the new year. W what the heck is going on here? Why are we seeing home prices go through the roof right now? Right. Well, first of all, uh, a good Sunday morning and um, top of the morning as well. You're seeing that it's it's a classic supply and demand. Uh, you, you, you'd think during a plague uh, that all would be bad, um, but there's actually opportunity in this crisis. That's an adage um, that I often use. You're seeing this because many Americans have much more residual income than you'd anticipate, uh, and typically they're not the frontline workers. And as a result, they're wanting to get away from that urban setting and go suburban if they can. They're wanting to have uh, bigger homes, which means moving and having definitely having a home office this time because you've got the dynamics of remote workability. And a lot of those that are, are, are moving are betting that they won't have to move back and or commute uh, 50 to 60 uh, uh, miles uh, to an urban setting. Um, I think everyone got con kind of caught flat-footed on this, including the builders. You, know, you, you mentioned that in the introduction there. There's something called the three L's, which is land, lumber, and labor, and uh, there's been a dichotomy, um, disconnect uh, rather, in those three elements that uh, predicate whether or not home builders build. So you're finding a, a substantial amount of demand uh, uh, for new homes, but where there's a lack of lumber or the prices have gone up, uh, and there's a lack of labor, at least skilled labor, uh, 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 to put those sticks up, and you've got a contentious market in terms of, of uh, at least the cost of labor and the scarcity of land, rather, um, you're seeing that having a propelling effect in terms of, uh, of those prices going up. It, it's not happening everywhere in every market, uh, but for the most part, uh, you've seen an incredible amount of uptick in the last 12 months. It's slowing down a little bit, but still, year on year, and it's, it's incredibly high. Oh, especially in Florida, and, and I think you made a good point. When people are buying new homes, they're especially looking for office spaces because a uh, majority of Americans now are working from home, and according to the latest studies and surveys, a lot of offices are not comfortable with having workers back at least full capacity, maybe 25% at work, 75% at home. Uh, a lot of people up north in New York said, why should I stick up here and pay taxes and put up with cold weather when I can 
can buy a condo on Miami Beach for what I'd live on in New York and be in the warm weather and I'll be working from home. In fact, we saw here in Florida a lot of people moving from your high-tax states like New York and California and also the New England area and especially right. down in South Florida. Are we going to see that continuing here in Florida in the future? You know, I follow the mayor of Miami. He's a really, in, in terms of his uh, pro-business uh, chamber of commerce um, um, cheerleader, he's doing a great job. And uh, that is wooing those in uh, um, those high-tech or, or, or urban markets right down the 95. And, and I've driven that uh, to South Florida. Um, better weather, uh, for the most part, a lower cost of living. Um, and it totally makes sense, and you can do this work remotely. There's really a lot of pent-up demand to go remote. Uh, in my world, mortgage operations, uh, I, textbook example, I happen to have came, came out here about a year and a half to Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm usually boots on the ground on site where I do my work, and uh, about a month later, it went remote. I've been here ever since and, and waiting to get back to California once things calm down. But you're going to see that type of uh, – of, of of migration amongst uh, certain uh, typically either pink or white collar workers that have the money in, in which to relocate, and it's probably going to be a trend that continues as well. Going to commercial brokerage um, in terms of vacant space, uh, to answer this very quickly, you know I've done a lot of work for the big five, big six, uh, Deloitte and Touche, Ernest Young, um, management consultants, and they would have cubicle spaces called hoteling. I first came across that 10 plus years ago. I couldn't figure that out. What that meant is for its transitory uh, white collar workers that would work in different uh, cities. Okay. And they'd set up shop, obviously not in a full on corner office, but just simply a cubicle called hoteling totally makes sense right now. And it's having a valuation uh, effect uh, for a lot of vacant office spaces that aren't probably going to renew and re-up on leases when they're coming due and they're coming due now. Well, I want to ask your opinion on something since we're talking about people moving and buying new homes. A study came out a couple of years ago, and believe it or not, it was done by U-Haul. And they did a study, a tracking of who's renting what trucks and where are these trucks going and, and where are they going. And their study revealed that a majority of millennials, when they are moving, are looking for a city that is arts friendly, has high end dining, a lot of local entertainment and is spread out and is walkable or has good public transportation. Uh, is that trend, in your opinion, still continuing? Now, that was a couple years ago, and I'm wondering, because of the coronavirus, were more millennials deciding to move into different areas because of the virus? And those are the uh, environments that they're looking at. They also said that public parks and recreation was also important. Right. Th those uh, trends are still uh, uh, true and, and fast. Um, you have something called the walk factor, quote unquote, that came about actually as a result of dot commerce and millennials about 20 years ago. And uh, you'll see that in, t in most uh, apartment uh, uh, websites for apartments and also for homes. What's the quote unquote walk factor? So places actually like Raleigh, North, Raleigh, North Carolina to Austin, Texas, uh, most definitely. Richmond, Virginia, uh, some in the uh, Virginia uh, uh, area as, as well, where there's a high-tech element, uh, Seattle, uh, and Charlotte, for example, lesser cities that are maybe sub-markets. Uh, technically, to a certain extent, th that walking was rather restricted for the last 18 months, but it's opening up. But that has a quality of life aspect that those millenniums that, that are anywhere from 25 to 45 now, uh, there's a next generation uh, after them uh, uh, that's starting to get more of the headlines. But that's, that, that's still a factor. Um, and it still holds true even though there's been a migration to su suburbia, although th there is a split di a demographic on that, that the older 45-plus uh, uh, homeowners are really more migrating towards the suburbia. Uh, the millennials, 25 to 45, are kind of roughing it out, staying in place when they have to, but they have a quest for that quality of life in terms of right outside of the city, or if they do happen to move in the city, they, they like that walk factor, for example. Now, you had mentioned in, in that answer there, you said the word apartments, and, and that's where my ears picked up, because I don't know if you see what the rental market here is in the Tampa Bay area. It's horrific. I mean, we're talking uh, a low rent, 750 square foot, one bedroom apartment is going for $1,300. And I see people paying 1300 a month rent. I'm thinking, 
Good Lord, man, that's that's more than you would make probably on a mortgage payment to get into a house. What's going on with this rental market? Well, I'd hate to pick the millenniums, but I'm going to take a shot at them again. They, they, they have more of, a, of an affinity to use residual money to go towards basic cost outlays, meaning that uh, traditionally you would have 30 to 35 percent go towards housing, either on the mortgage side or the renter side. That's been uh, kicked up to the high 40s to low 50s, meaning it's that important to them to have that walk factor or that quality of, of, of life. Um, it's, it's a prioritization of, of, of um, what your likes and dislikes are. Um, I, I, you know, that's good. And let, let me just say, uh, those tend to be very large units, 60 plus to 100 unit plus uh, uh, locations where you're getting those type of, of rents, uh, not usually for the fourplexes or the 16 uh, unit deals. Um, but you're, you're seeing that, and that's stabilizing some of the markets, uh, which is a good aspect, but you're not seeing that in all markets. When we had this coronavirus outbreak happen and we saw the feds drop the interest rate, and they're still, I think, historically low for mortgages right now. We don't know what the Fed's going to do in the future. But uh, th- that encouraged a lot of people for the first time in their life to really even think about coming up with a down payment, hiring a realtor, getting a mortgage, or looking for a lender. And you know all the steps you have to go through when you buy a house. This was the first time ever a lot of home buyers were out there looking. And there's still out there looking what advice do you give to somebody who right now says i'm not going to pay 1300 a month for rent i'm going to start shopping around i've got enough money for a decent mm-hmm. down payment my credit score is good i can get a loan i can get a house where do you start and what do you do i mean like again there's not a lot of selection out there right now you're, you're finding that in a lot of markets it, it it is running to the better part of what they call an affordability index, meaning a lot of the markets have changed with the pendulum swing in such a way that you have something called the affordability index, where that is a city-by-city city index of where it makes sense, more or less, to buy instead of rent. Uh, you know, if you're in a, uh, a, a negative equity um, uh, investment strategy, which essentially is what a renter is by definition, then you have that wake-up call, uh, that moment where you say, gee whiz, I may have not been an economics major, uh, but doggone it, I think I need to buy like my parents did. And if you're a little bit older than that, and if you aren't, have kids, where for $1,300 I can have a you know 2,000 square foot home in St. Petersburg, it might be a little bit older, and or Tampa, or, 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 or some of the other surrounding uh, uh, cities. Um, you're seeing that swing. It's a good swing. It's a great time to have that swing because uh, the interest rates are, are the high uh, twos to the low threes, and uh, you're seeing that migration. Everybody wins on that in terms of selling big-ticket items, um, getting people to work to clean um, and, and to build those homes, and uh, for the sales agents uh, to make commissions, and for someone to actually uh, create generational wealth either they be black, white, brown, or anything in between, to actually go out there and buy a home as opposed to being a a, a long-time renter. We've got about a minute left, and it may not be enough time for you to fairly answer this question, but one thing we haven't touched on was commercial real estate. People still look for commercial real estate as an investment opportunity, and I can tell you right now, rent on Main Street has never been higher. Mom-and-pop stores that were once flourishing are now empty because mom-and-pop can't afford that rent and nobody's moving in. Is it still a good time to get involved in commercial real estate as an investor? If if, if you're cash-heavy... At- Absolutely, you're going to see some huge discounts, especially on the retail side. If you look at the multifamily, uh, they're not going to be as deep of a discount um, uh, because even though it's more difficult to move that product, uh, the multifamily, when I used to represent uh, uh, sellers, would be a little bit less uh, liberal. So good on the good on the multifamily, not so good on the retail because you have empty storefronts. Yeah, and it'll probably be a while before they get those rented out. For example, there was a steakhouse very popular that was always busy in the building right next door to us in our office complex and they jacked up the rent the steakhouse said, all right, we'll move somewhere else. And that building's been sitting empty for over a year now. And then you had the coronavirus hit. That didn't help. But now the owner of that property is losing money. Yeah, they are. They are, and someone will eventually pick it up. 
All right, D. Sidney Potter, your book is called The Broker Deals, Steals, and Moving Forward. You've got other books called The Flip and The Essayist, but your newest book is available at Amazon and wherever anybody gets their reading material. And again, D. Sidney Potter, author and real estate mortgage consultant and expert. The man's got so many degrees, I couldn't even begin to start <laughs> telling you how many degrees this guy has. But it's been a pleasure talking to you, and thank you so much for the input. Absolutely. Good Sunday morning to you. All right. Have a great weekend, D. D. Sidney Potter, author and real estate mortgage consultant, on the air with us this morning talking about this red-hot real estate market. You've been hearing Sunday morning. Have a good week.